Welcome back, everybody. After attending Roosevelt High School in Yonkers, New York, Ted Leitner followed his brother to Oklahoma State University. I went to Oklahoma State to walk on and play football there. And I did pretty well in high school, all city in, in that area, and as a defensive end. And I thought, you know, about six foot, 195 at that time, that was about pretty much average size at Oklahoma State also, even though it was big eight. And so I had gone out there to walk on. And the day before practice started, I went to the radio television department which I was going to be enrolled in and talk to the professor, Bob Lacey, who was a wonderful guy. And he said, that, hey, don't play football. The play-by-play -play guy here on the campus radio station, Steve O'Neill, he's a senior. So train with him. When Steve graduates, you be the play-by-play -play guy. And I thought, Bob, you got it. And gave up football before I even started. And the first week, they got a Oklahoma State's playing Arkansas and Little Rock, and I'm there on the radio. I never saw a college game in person till the one I was broadcasting with Oklahoma State that and day. And that fulfilled you more than being on the sidelines and pads? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I wasn't a great player. I was an okay player and probably would have gotten buried at Oklahoma State with that level of, of talent in the Big 8, playing Nebraska, Missouri, and those guys back then in that conference. There's no way. But the radio thing, going from the PA, suddenly I'm actually with a microphone and people are listening, at least in the dorms on, on campus where they listen to the campus radio station. It was wonderful. And I had this New York accent from hell. I made the all-time New York accent. So I get back and Professor Lacey says to me, you know, you did pretty well. You never did play-by-play -play before. I said, no, I didn't. And I stole a lot of stuff from Marty Glickman, who I used to listen to do the New York Yankees, New York Giants, rather. He also did the Knicks. And the professor said, you did pretty well, but I have a question. Where the hell is Arkansas? <laughs> <laughs> you kept saying we're in Little Rock, Arkansas. He said, you've got to get rid of that accent. I mean, yesterday, if you think you're going to be in this business. <laughs> Ted graduated from Oklahoma State and moved on to grad school at the University of Oklahoma. There, he called football as the color man and did play-by-play -play for OU basketball. He was also the weekend sports anchor at Channel 9 in Oklahoma City. When you finished your time in Oklahoma, was it always in the back of your mind, like, I'm going to end up doing this back east. This is where I'm from. This is where I'm yeah. going to belong. This yeah. is where I want to be. Yeah, and that was stupid. That was stupid because Oklahoma City was a wonderful market with great people in Oklahoma, friendly as can be. And uh, I still had that thing to go back east, and I eventually did, mm -hmm. and didn't do that well. I'd gone from Oklahoma City to Hartford, worked in Hartford. Headhunters, as they call them, came and wa were watching on television, looking for people. And they said, oh, are you that offbeat all the time? Pretty much. We'd love to have you do that. But just the game is not serious. Monopoly's not, not serious. Monopoly's fairly funny, so why isn't football, really? You don't agree with me. <laughs> Your time in Philadelphia, what was that like? I was, it was stupid. It was totally stupid. Why was that? Because I developed a style in, in television sports of looking at the camera, not using a script, and just talking in a, in a conversational voice. And this didn't play in, in, in Philadelphia. So what a stupid idea that was. So I went to Philadelphia, lasted a year and a half. I bombed. <laughs> bombed. Because there, I mean, there's just, it's life and death there. You know that. Yeah, it's a tough town. Phillies, sure. Flyers, I mean, that's it. But you never thought of quitting the business. You just figured no. it doesn't work for me here. No, I just have to do the act, as it were, which was just the way I did it on television. We're just talking instead of reading, you know, and going up and down and reading a script. I never did that. And so, and the GM, the GM, Bob Hosking, I remember he became president of the CBS radio. So he's my boss in, in Philadelphia. He, we have lunch, and he says to me, do you dive? I said, what do you mean dive? You know, aqua lung, deep sea diving? No, no. He said, well, let me give you, let me give you a kind of a, a, a deep sea analogy here of you and our television audience. You give them the bends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so this is not so going to be. So the bends aren't good? This is not going to be, this is not going to be a good lunch. So I was just saying, no. He said, order, you're gone. And now let's have lunch. I really like you and you're a good friend, but you're the wrong guy in the wrong market. And he was right. After I got fired, I, I called a friend of mine who was the executive producer, Jim Loy, at Channel 8 in San Diego. We worked together in Oklahoma City, and he said, come out here. We've got a sports opening here. And that's how I did it. How'd the style play here initially? It was love and hate. It was very different. Nobody ever looked at the camera and just said, you believe these clippers, you and you how stupid they are, how bad they are. And nobody's ever done that in, in this market. It didn't matter. The Padres win 6-5 as R. Hoyt won his ninth game. And uh, they were very, very tough. Gossage, by the way, came on, got his 16th save and closed the door in San Francisco. On the one hand, it was, people thought it was wonderful and they tuned in and the other half hated my guts. And it's always kind of been like that. Was this a personal style of yeah. this that you developed? But on TV sports, I never took from anybody. 
because all those guys are a bunch of old radio guys who got the TV jobs or athletes who got the jobs. In my case, in New York, Frank Gifford, Kyle Rote of the Giants, people like that, Jim Bouton later, and they would just basically up and down with the script and, and read it and, and so forth. And I never, ever wanted to do that and never did it. And I don't know how I decided to just talk and not use a script. Great to have, did. And it was great, I'm sure, to have management, unlike your situation in Philadelphia, that not only condoned and endorsed it, but Boy, supported you. Are you smart? That's a, you don't do that. You, Mike, you don't do that when three people call in, or in my case, 200 at Channel 8, and say, he said this, and I'll never watch again. And this happened all the time. Yeah. But I'd, I'd walk to, toward the set, and, and, and the news director would say, hey, get out there and piss him off today. That's what he would say. <laughs> Go out there and piss him off. Say anything you want. Because we got the research here, and they're all watching. That's what I was going to see. Ask what the how hell you're going to say next? Yes. How were the ratings? So even the general manager, Bob Myers, called me in and said, "Look at this, look at this. Sixty percent of these people say you're the reason they watch Channel Eight News." And I said to him, "Bob, that's a big mistake telling me that, because <laughs> <laughs> my contract is up in about a year." And he said, "Yeah, you're right, but I don't care."